I'm excited to have our next presenter. Jim Laundrie is the Chief Operating Officer at Dream Factory, and he, he's got over a decade of experience in marketing, advertising, and you know, public relations. But his expertise really includes you know, lead generation, business development, and planning the execution of you know, creative marketing in, you know, initiatives. And, Today he's going to really share his knowledge about you know, lead generation, really how to build a scalable marketing solution that you know will be able to grow with your business. So thank you so much for your time today, Jim. I, I really appreciate it. Joel, thanks for the invite. I really appreciate it too. So, Looking you know, forward to it. The biggest question that we get, you know, what is you know the the latest trend in marketing that you know everybody's trying to sell is the next best thing, but you know it, it's really kind of passed us by. Yeah, you know, I, I hear this all the time. Everyone says, uh, you know, don't put an ad out without a QR code on it. That one drives me crazy. Um, like, like people are gonna walk around with their, you know, their phones and just, you know, go ahead and scan the <laughs> QR codes. Uh, it doesn't. It, it's insanity. Uh, but there's a lot of other stuff kind of like that. Um, there's the uh, NFC tag thing, uh, which gives you a lot more content. I feel like, and it's actually a little more engaging. But um, it's it's hard to implement a, a system across the board with NFC tags because the, the way it works. Um, so yeah, those are the things that I think that really kind of drive me nuts. I think that the um, on the flip side, the things that are kind of here to stay right now, I think, are the automation uh, things that, that really give people some insight into where the con where the consumption's coming from, um, mm -hmm. patterns, demographic data, really like deep big data kind of stuff that even small businesses don't can afford. Yeah. A lot a lot of people have heard of big data, you know, I think it was yeah. one of those trending words uh, in 2017, but you know, how can a small business, uh, let's say with a retail product, you know, tap into you know, that big data knowledge? What's a tool that they should look into for that? So there are a ton of these out there. Um, the one thing I say to people all the time is, is you know, this market does not change, no, does not stay the same. This is one of the fastest moving markets uh, out there, the technology side of things. So um, one of the things I like to tell people is look for um, in-store data providers, ones that are that are really in there, like uh, we've heard about, you know, Thomason and a few other providers. Um, if you really look on Google and, and kind of look up the uh, case studies, don't trust the providers, trust the reviews. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the, uh, the old uh, Yelp generation, so. Um, look what people's real experiences are in utilizing those. And especially in the retail space where things are, um, are, are so challenged and so pressured in terms of price and in terms of availability by um, online services, uh, Amazon of course leading the way, you have to differentiate in other ways and you have to have uh, some traction. So you can't just throw things at the wall, you have to kind of know and, 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 and um, actually utilize the programs you get. I will say that the one thing that really sets a lot of advertisers apart right now is their ability to not just uh, implement new systems, but actually leverage them across the entire uh, platform. And so you might have 50 different sales reps, you might have three, uh, but if they're not using your technology, it doesn't matter what you buy into, it doesn't matter the cost, it doesn't matter any of that stuff. What really matters is the utility of it. So I would say uh, don't buy into anything unless you're actually going to use it, mm -hmm. uh, unless you actually have a training program that's uh, effective. Um, and, uh, and definitely ask around before you go jumping into something you have no idea uh, of any of the details of what it is. That's great advice. I think a lot of people get swept up in kind of the latest trends, and you know, really sometimes, you know, old school tactics work better if you're going to yeah. use them. You know, but one of our members asked a pretty relevant question. You know, if they were to you know hire an advertising agency, you know, how can they tell if the company that they hired is going to really improve their bottom line? So accountability is a really big thing. Um, we we tend to kind of focus on the the term of marketing attribution. So if you're gonna if you're gonna hire a especially in re, this is a really important thing for retail. Um, many agencies will have you sign up for essentially a retainer, right? A, a baseline cost, uh, saying you will commit to us um, x thousands of dollars for uh, for labor and effort. Mm -hmm. um, and that's something that's a it creates a relationship, you know. And it's a I think the model is still very relevant. So you're getting you know. 25 people for the cost of two employees and they have expertise that you couldn't get otherwise, you know, from just hiring two people in house. It makes a lot of sense. And they're fully accountable if they're not working out, you, you fire them and you move on right. to another agency. But I will say that the um, the one thing I always kind of uh, talk to people about is beware of the buzzword people, you know, the people that just throw on buzzwords and, and don't have any idea of what your product or service really is or where it, where it is in the marketplace. If they've not done their research on your company, 
then you know they're just looking for a dollar, and, and that's really the important thing on the front end. The second thing I always look for is um, make sure they have a good pedigree. Um, people that say that they use a program are different from people who are certified in a program who have used it for you know over a decade. Um, and, and look at the types of implementations that they've actually utilized uh, with those programs. So, for example, if they've got huge companies that are multi-billion-dollar companies, and your company is a 1.5 million retail company, might not be applicable. Their experience might be um, in a space where they have like a hundred people to leverage, and so the numbers look great. But you know, anything they would have done would have looked great with that many uh, salespeople. Right. So, you just have to think about the applicability of the of the product and service offering. I think that's the most important thing. Okay, so to try to find somebody in that space that speaks the same language. Um, yeah, yeah, that's the most important thing. What questions should they be asking, you know, when they're looking to, you know, hire a marketing advertising company for the product? I, I tend to think that if somebody walks to the door and they talk to you about um, how you're going to get a return on investment in a certain time period, that's a really good thing. They're, they're, they're thinking about the right things from day one. If they start talking about in the very beginning, and not that this isn't important, but if they start talking about like redoing your website and redoing your business cards before they even understand if your website or business cards are even working in terms of the <laughs> brand, uh, that's probably a sign you don't need to be talking to those people. Um, the one thing I, I do I do understand though, you, you have to have a very strong and recognizable brand. However, the go to market is by far the most important thing in my mind. Um, a lot of people, uh, especially in like retail, you know, if you're getting in a store is important, the retail location of the the is just as important and the location on the shelves are just as important. So understanding holistically top to bottom what you're supposed to be doing as an agency is what I would probably look for more than anything else. Yeah. Okay. And if you're speaking to a you know consumer goods company that you know, had a website and they were looking to kind of take their you know their funds this year and maybe reinvest. It, does a website matter anymore, or should they be allocating more money and more attention to you know their social presence or another path? Right. So this is a great point. Um, Ten years ago, everybody was into websites, right? Mm -hmm. Everyone's into SEO. You, you know, ta type it into Google and pop up at the top, and, and um, you had all these uh, kind of uh, you know black hat uh, website stuffers. You know, they put a bunch of keywords. You know, mm -hmm. uh, fifteen different keywords uh, for every line, and they'd all these you know algorithms and Google, by and large, has kind of gotten rid of that whole thing, but that's kind of actually relevant for most companies now. We talk about entry points, and I think that the the, the key complement of any agency is to take a look at how many entry points they've created for your brand. So let's say you have a Facebook page. How many people come in from Facebook? And then Twitter and Instagram and go down the list. All those are entry points, and they, they target different uh, target markets, right? Different demographics, different types of consumers. Understanding how those things play into the success of your brand, um, and especially in a retail a aspect, like how many bucks you show up and buy your product, mm -hmm. is, is critical, right? So um, you can run promos through one channel versus another channel and A-B test them in various geographic markets. There, there's tons of stuff you can do um, to kind of uh, figure out where your, your bread's buttered. And, and, and so I tend to focus in on uh, what's working uh, from day one, looking at competitors, figuring out what they're doing really well, um, and the big guys have tons more money to kind of spend on these types of efforts. So I like to you know, piggyback on their efforts and go go do a little bit of uh, you know boots on the ground. Um, you know, take a look at the stores that you're going to be going into. Figure out what your your best competitors are doing. Uh, figure out ways to do it better than them. Um, do stuff that's memorable, not just you know milk toast kind of stuff. You know, like right. everyone do don't do what everyone else does. Do it a little bit differently. So that's where I'd start. I'd think about entry points. I would make sure that I figure out where my strengths lie. And again, just like the automation stuff, don't just jump into something because it's cool and someone else is doing it. Are you going to utilize it or not? If you are, do it. If you're not, don't do it. That's simple. That's a great point. I don't think a lot of people really take that boots on the ground approach anymore where, you no. know, because Google gives you so much information, but there, there's a lot you can learn by walking into a store and putting your eyes on it. And you know, everybody yeah. pays so much attention to, you know, advertising online to support their product in retail. You know, what are the other ways that somebody can get you know eyes on their branding, as you said, entry points? So you know, this is a, a really it's a weird thing with online. Everyone always defaults to online, mm -hmm. and it's such a heavy conversation. Getting them past that understanding mm -hmm. that online is the only game in town is a very difficult thing to do because um, it's cheap. Uh, email is still free, you know. So by and large, um, so you can send a billion emails out and get a whole bunch of response. You think you're being successful. Uh, it, it's it's a bit of a um, 
you know, it's a bit of a comfort that people get from seeing statistics, but not really understanding what the impact is long term. Mm. I, I think the, the one thing I would I would say is understand the the experience of your of your consumer, like understand what they're actually looking for. And so um, trying to ask people real questions, doing more case studies of, um, you know, focus groups and things of that nature, like what, what is your real experience with the product? Um, how often do you buy it? Getting real data. Uh, your experience for, let's say, for example, if you, <laughs> one of the clients we just had was a um, uh, beef jerky client, and uh, there are a billion versions of beef jerky. How do you differentiate? Uh, and then how do you make margin in a space where, you know, the the, the big guys like the Slim Jims and stuff like that uh, are, are running on such thin margins? Um, you know, figuring out what the experience is and how often people actually buy your product and when they buy your product is, is, is just as critical. So I'd focus on the... the, the the real details of how you're different. Um, again, especially in the retail space, if you're going to be one of a billion different companies, you have to stand out. So I think focusing more on that than anything else is probably the, the best use of your time and money, for sure. Okay. And as far as kind of building up a uh, area, you know, a, lo a lot of times, you know, people get started in you know regions or even cities. Right. You know, is there anything specifically that they can focus on, either online or offline, to really kind of build up their in-store presence in an area, in a small sure. location. A lot of times retailers, um, they, they love it when you come in with some sort of a, uh, you know, a pop display or something like that. Something to talk about a promotion. Mm -hmm. um, those things are really, um, they're really great if you can support it with people. Um, you know, it used to be uh, everyone did street teams, you know, like 15 years ago. We did tons and tons of street teams, experiential um, marketing, right? Um, it's kind of circling back to that a little bit now. Uh, the best way of, of doing that, I've at least I've been experiencing lately, is piggybacking off of other promotions. So, for example, um, they have this, uh, and we're in, I'm in Orlando here, so uh, we have a um, uh, Latin festival that just happened here, and there were literally like hundreds of brands, right, that are all trying to fight for mind share. They're trying to get uh, people to pay attention uh, to their brands. But more importantly, the people that did really well were the ones that actually gave you free product and then asked you what you thought about it and then talked about other products they had in that type of a line. So um, companies like Goya and people like that were doing a really good job of, of throwing multiple people at the, uh, you know, at the, at the problem and understanding that you're going to be dealing on a crowd, it's loud, it's music playing from all directions. Right. Um, but getting people to focus in, especially kids, uh, getting them to, to dedicate you know, 15, 30 seconds uh, to an experience of buying something or, or just trying something and then asking if, if they would if you know what, what could I do to buy this again well it's in Publix it's in some other retail establishment like creating that relationship is really important um, the other thing is don't uh, don't discount the lifetime value of a customer I mean, especially if a retail product if you put it on your in your shopping list um, or you put it on your your wish list every single day on the way home you're buying mm -hmm. let's say you know milk for the kids or the cereal in the morning and they look on the there, there it is on the shelf. When you, when you buy that product, because they tried it at the festival. It's stuff like that 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 really creates traction, uh, and that's really what you're looking for in retail. It's about you know changing a pattern of behavior. It's about influencing the person to continually buy your product, not just one one off kind of stuff. So that's the most important thing I think right now, especially in, a, in such a muddled retail market. Yeah, that's a great example. And what would you say is the best marketing that somebody can do, you know, to drive foot traffic into retail? I, I, I think you really touched on it where, you know, you, you're trying to get that mind share. Um, as far as kind of that reoccurring revenue and getting, getting them really to walk into a store and, you know, go for your product, how can, how can you really drive that? You know, social engagement nowadays uh, is kind of the most, um, like I said, the easiest way to get to people. If you really understand when people consume your product, when they buy your product, mm -hmm. um, and you properly day part your your uh, campaigns to go after them, um, you can get people. Like I just had a campaign uh, last week. We we're talking about where we um, we're trying to target uh, iPads from you know 7 p.m. to 9:30 p.m. That's when people are really on their iPads. So we're doing device targeting, you know. Um, and uh, the other thing is making sure that when somebody is um, in your target market, you're sending promoted promoted content to them. It, it's not that expensive anymore. Uh, it used to be, especially in certain areas, uh, like for example, if you're in the life insurance business, uh, your, your per click basis on Google is like 40 bucks and stuff. So not exactly the, the kind of place you wanna spend a lot of money. But in the online space, you're talking about like, you know, uh, pennies per click, you can do that really, really easily. And look, 
here's the truth, right? People go on uh, into retail space, they want to try something new. So if you have a new product, um, trying to change people's behavior is not that hard. Just make sure you get the right spacing, the right signage. Um, make sure you get the traction. If, you, if you've spent the time getting people to the store to mm -hmm. go try your product, make sure they can find it. Um, that's really a big thing. So, so having a, an in-store specialist really understanding where to put your product, I think is as important as getting people to your product. Because even if, you, let's say you don't drive people very successfully to the, to the store, if you have really good signage and really good promotion, they might just try it because they see it in store. So mm -hmm. focusing in on, again, a holistic approach, right? It's not just one size fits all. It's not just, you know, getting lucky with a couple of tweets or a couple of Facebook posts with a couple of good videos, which are all important things, but making sure you also have the kind of basically closing the loop on that whole thing, making sure that they actually get a chance to try the product or find it at least. I, th I think that's that's a perfect example, really that holistic approach, because once you get the person in the store, you know, how can you make your product stand out on the shelf? Because there's so many selections. Right. You know, how can you make it really appeal to the most amount of people? Do you have any suggestions? Um, don't go cheap on the packaging. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, like everybody tries to, to find ways to cut costs, especially when you're when you're a new product. But established products, you'll notice that they, they tend to change packaging quite often. Um, they do a lot of A/B testing, they do a lot of focus groups. Um, if you're a small retailer, if you're if you're a small business trying to get your foot in the door, um, come up with something different. You know, come up with something that really a, a tagline or or a, a persona that, that you're trying to really focus in on. Um, one that's a more dedicated persona to your product or service, right? So. Um, especially in the case of uh, like back to the beef jerky example, you know, you want to identify with a feeling, not just a taste, right? You want to, someone to identify as being rugged or um, health conscious or, you know, something that really drives um, some sort of a mind share going forward. That, yeah, they need to love the product, but they also want to feel a certain way about consuming that product. They want to be able to tell their friends that they're proud to, you know, consume that product, not, and not so many words. Um, so I think that's a really important factor. Uh, you can't just be a, a regular product. You can't just be, you know, oh look, we're the, the healthiest, or the most natural, you know, it's kind of buzzwords that are out there. Um, you, be creative with it and do something that you feel uh, confident in so that when you're promoting it, it kind of comes through also in your sales pitch. So um, take some extra time on that. Don't just throw, it, throw things at the wall and, and hope that it sticks. So really doing that split testing for the packaging, trying to stand yeah. out on the shelf compared to the other brands out there. Yeah, and I mean, look, you, you can you can spend a little bit more money on a package and have it stand out, and all of a sudden, just because of that little bit, people tend to remember you the next time they go to the store, you know? So, or if there's no more promotion, let's say the promotion's over, the two for one or whatever you're doing, once those little signs go down with the arrows and things of that nature, if they can't find it, you know, or it gets moved the shelf, it gets moved on the shelf somewhere and it wasn't, you weren't there to, you know, mm -hmm. or to kind of manage that process. Uh, you need to make sure that people can still see it and still um, recognize it on the shelf. So, a very important factor. Great. And w what would you leave everybody with? You know, what's the best thing that they can do to prepare their business for success this year? You know, the, I would say, you know, especially when you're talking about a, a company that's just a few people or um, highly leveraged, you have to have systems that help you. Um, systems are cheap nowadays. Most things are cloud-based. You don't have to worry about you know having tons of servers and things of that nature. Um, I, I mean, the service that we're talking on right now wasn't even around that long ago. Uh, so, you know, conferencing solutions used to be thousands upon thousands of dollars. Now you plug into an iPad and bang, you're on in the on the office. So, just think about it that way. You know, everything that 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 you can probably think up in terms of marketing uh, analytics and big data has probably happened. Uh, in terms of the accessibility, it gets better and better in terms of analytics and analyzing that data every every day. But small businesses have you know tools and automation solutions that are a couple hundred bucks a month. You know uh, we've we've used everything from you know Infusionsoft all the way up to uh, Eloqua, and um, I can tell you that you know there, there's a size for everybody when it comes to automation. And so looking at that and evaluating that's a, a really important part of your business going forward. Make sure it's a scalable part of your business, not one that you have to change out every year or two years. Right. Um, feel comfortable with it. And uh, remember, almost everything now has an app, so you can take it with you. You don't have to be at a desktop computer. Um, you can be on your iPad, your laptop, and be able to, to fully interface with your, your pipeline, your sales, your, your, your CRM, you know, for all your contact management, all your lead generation um, systems. And um, don't be afraid to try new things. I mean, just set, set a solid budget. Um, make sure that you're you're following up with it and you're giving it an appropriate amount of time. And uh, like I tell everybody, do do the do the time management the right way, right? Do your proposals after hours. Do your uh, your lead gen focus stuff when you're fresh. 
uh, usually in the morning, and uh, during the day, do your do your outreach. That's when people are around in the office. So um, just segment your day appropriately and use your systems to help you to, um, basically get a multiplier effect out of your time. Excellent. Well, yeah, I, I appreciate that advice. Yeah, I, I think a lot of people it's going to resonate with. So thank you so much for your time and your You're experience today. Awesome. Thanks, Joel.